overflows. Innocence, the forgotten language. Innocence is the language for inner communion. However, in the clutter of the mind, this language is long forgotten. Bliss is the fragrance of this language. Innocence is the language for communion between lover and beloved. Both Devi and Shiva are one reality, one cosmic presence. However, for the purpose of understanding and explanation, both appear as two separate forms. So too, both lover and beloved are one reality, dissolve into one another, exist as a luminous presence. This luminous presence is the fragrance, is the fragrance of innocence. Innocence is the language of the being. It communes silence, but amidst the clutter of the mind, man has forgotten this language. To live in the moment is innocence. To live without past is innocence. To live without any conclusion is innocence. To function out of the state of not knowing is innocence. And the moment you function out of such tremendous silence which is not burdened by any past, out of such tremendous stillness which knows nothing, the experience that happens, the experience that happens is beauty. Beauty and innocence define each other. Whenever you feel beauty in the rising sun, in the stars, in the flowers, or in the face of a woman, or a man, wherever and whenever you feel beauty, watch. And one thing will always be found, you had functioned without mind. You had functioned without any change or conclusion. You had simply functioned spontaneously. The moment gripped you and the moment gripped you so deeply that you were cut off from the past. Know this innocence. And when you are cut off from the past, you are cut off from the future automatically. It is so because past and future are two sides or aspects of the same coin, not separate or separable either. The name of the coin that has two sides is mind. When whole coin is dropped, that dropping is innocence. Then you do not know who you are. Also you do not know what is there no knowledge but you are you are an existence is the meeting of you and existence with infinite ishness is innocence you the small ishness and that merges with the infinite ishness this meeting that merger is the experience of beauty. This experience is innocence. Innocence is the door. Through innocence you enter beauty. The more innocent you become, existence becomes beautiful for you in the same proportion. Overflowing such a state of innocence, Devi asks, What constitutes seed? Through, though Devi is addressing Shiva, 
but really she is seeking the answers within. Deeper truth are answers that are capable to transform a person are sought deep within. Deeper truth or answers that are capable to transform a person are sought deep within. Devi continues. From the universe she goes on to ask what constitutes this seed, this formless, wonderful universe. From where does it come? From where does it originate? Or does it not originate? What is the seed? Who centers the universal wheel? Asks Devi. This wheel goes on moving and moving, this great change, this constant flux. But who centers this wheel? There is the axis, the center, an unmoving center. She does not stop for any answer. Instead, like a child, she goes on asking as if she is not asking anymore, as if she is talking to herself. Such is the state of innocence. What is this life beyond form, pervading forms? How may we enter it fully, ever be space and time, names and descriptions? Let my doubts be cleared. Let my doubts be cleared. The emphasis is not on questions but on doubts. Let my doubts be cleared. These are not questions arising in human mind. For the seeker, these are doubts for which the seeker needs clarification. The moment a seeker approaches the awakened one this way to clear her doubts, she is on the right path. This is very significant. If you are asking an intellectual question, you are asking for a definite answer so that your problem is solved. But Devi says, let my doubts be cleared. She is not asking about answers. She is seeking transformation of her mind. Remember, a doubting mind will remain a doubting mind always. Whatsoever answers are given, doubt remains. A doubting mind will always remain a doubting mind. Answers are irrelevant. If I give you one answer and you have a doubting mind, you will doubt it. If I give you another answer, you will doubt that also you have a doubting mind. A doubting mind means you will put the question mark to anything. So answers are useless. You ask me who created the world and I tell you A created the world. Then you are bound to ask who created A. So the real problem is not how to answer questions. The real problem is how to change the doubting mind. How to create a mind which is not doubting or which is trustful. So Devi says, let my doubts be cleared. Such is the state of a seeker. Such was the way Nivedita approached Tao, her master. Deep within, she was clear about the one who she is about to approach. She knew the path has chosen her, not she. As she says, 
the time of destined meeting has arrived. Two or three things more. When you ask a question, you may be asking for many reasons. One may be just this, that you want a confirmation. You already know the answer. You have the answer. You just want to be confirmed that your answer is right. Then your question is false. It is not a question. You may be asking a question not because you are ready to change yourself, but just as a curiosity to strengthen your ego. The mind goes on questioning. In the mind questions mushroom as leaves come on a tree. That is the very nature of the mind to question. So it goes on questioning. It matters not what you are questioning and anything given to the mind it will create a question. It is a machine to grind out to create questions. So give it anything and it will cut into pieces and create many questions. One question answered and the mind will create many questions from that answer. This has been the whole history of philosophy. Burton Russell remembers that when he was a child, he thought one day when he will be mature enough to understand the philosophy, all questions will be answered. Then later, when he was 80, he said, Now I can see that my questions are there standing as they were standing when I was a child. No other question, no other questions have come up because of these theories of philosophies. So he said, when I was young, I used to say, philosophy is an inquiry for ultimate answers. When I was young, I used to say, philosophy is an inquiry for ultimate answers. Now I cannot say it. Now I cannot say it. It is an inquiry for endless questions. Burton Russell says, Philosophy is an inquiry for endless questions. Endless questions. Enough for now.